So let's talk about Korosami. As most of you guys know, I love Korosami. But it didn't start out that way. I actually kind of, like, was jumping ships after... For those who don't know, in book one, for shits and giggles, yes, I was treating it like that because we had Mako and Korra, which was a ship that I just did not give two shits about. So, for, for laughs, I jumped on the Amora ship, yes, Amon and Korra ship, for, again, shits and giggles. But, and when that ship went down, I, uh... <laughs> I, uh... I started jumping from ship to ship. I'm using I'm using this as a as a great as a wonderful term. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. I it's three in the morning uh, as I'm recording this. Yeah, because fuck sleep. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I kind of jumped from Tano and Korra to I think for a little while I stuck on Tano and Korra. On the grounds, I saw these this uh, great cosplay couple do some YouTube videos, and I was like, I just like the ship because you two are adorable together. But then I finally jumped on the on the Asami Korra, you know, the Korra Asami ship, because the uh, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I like Korra Asami, and then I'll get into some reasons why I think it works. Now, before before I go any further, I would like to say that uh, I yes. Uh, I know Korosami's kind of dri caused a civil war within the fandom, and it's still raging on. It's been weeks since the end of Kor Legend of Korra and and the Avatar series in general, and the uh, <coughs> in the fandom still kind of back and forth about it. It's it's kind of like it's <laughs> it's almost like the. Uh, the, if anyone's seen Gangs of New York, do you remember that opening scene with Liam Neeson and all of his gang together fight? You know they're gearing up to fight uh, Daniel Day Lewis and his crew in like a uh, plaza in Five Points, New York, and then they just clash, and it's this bl this horrifically bloody moment. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it very much reminds me of that. Only you know it's on. Tumblr and Facebook and every other social media. It's them back and forth. Anyway, now, I know some of my, uh, some people who watch my vi my vids, uh, my Legend of Korra vids, don't, uh, there are people who do like Korra of Asami and those who don't. Like, uh, take for instance Major Badass, who does not enjoy Korra Asami. Totally fine. Totally fine. I don't mind, you know, uh, love what you love. That's always been my motto. Uh, that's always been my family motto, and that's been kind of always the mantra in my life. Is that you know, everyone's got their own thing. Don't screw with them about it. So it so you know, this is just me. You know, I personally like Korosami. I'm not saying hey, you should like Korosami because I like Korosami, and you're an idiot if you don't. I'm not saying that at all. If you don't like Korosami, that's totally fine. No ill will against you. In the, no ill will in the slightest. Um, if you like Korra, you know, Makora, Tanora, Korra, and hell, I don't know. What's a really crazy one I gotta just shoot out here? Uh, I don't know, Pabu? There you go. Panora? Fuck it. I don't know. Anyway. So, with that being said, let's talk about why I like Korra Asami and why I think it kind of works. Korra and Asami, I think, feel like... I feel like they would... They really do understand each other more so than... Uh, Korra did with Mako. I feel like with Mako, she would just be kind of running... Her, uh, her personality and Mako's personality, or at the time of their, when they were dating, lack thereof, did not feel, uh, it didn't feel like it was meshing, obviously, it did just, it felt messy, it didn't feel right when they were together, I did not like that at all, um, and again, some of this shit, uh, shit Mako pulled was just, uh, like, oh my god, dude, really, you, you do that, and then, 
<laughs> you when you know when Cora comes back, and again, spirits is a hard thing to stomach through. Book two is a hard thing to. St- I can go back and watch uh, book one and still find things I like in there. Book two is a clusterfuck in and of itself. I mean, you have beginnings, and you have a few episodes towards the end. But on a whole, Spirits is a giant mess, which is easily rectified by uh, book three, which I'm, I'm starting to think that book three, and when I think about it more, I think book three is probably my favorite season. And it's probably, and I'm not the only one on this. I know a lot of people really do think book three is probably the best. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So with that, you know, obviously Korra's. They both here's the, here's another here's a major reason why I think Korra and Asami would really work. As, they really do work as a couple. They've both experienced loss. Korra on a physical level, Asami on a excuse me, Korra on a spiritual level, and Asami on a physical level. When I say physical, I mean obviously she's lost both her mother and now her father. Whereas Korra's lost the entire Avatar cycle, and she just has to start from scratch all over again. Not only that, she's, you know, obviously that poison traumatized her for years, and the only person she felt, you know, safe talking to was Asami. And also, you know, Asami, you know, I can also see why, you know, we did, and I can, and I can totally see why people did not like the Korasami ship because there wasn't enough evidence there. Whereas you saw some little moments here and there. I I think I can I can explain this. I don't know if I could do this to the best of my ability, but I'll try my damnedest. Let me say this. Mike and Brian did want to do Korasami. I feel like they really wanted to, but you have to understand, that ending we got with Kor and Asami walking to the spirit portal, that took them three months of fighting with Nickelodeon to do. So I can only imagine Nickelodeon having a shit the board, you know, the people in charge of Nickelodeon having a almighty shit fit if Mike and Brian and the other, cre- you know, other heads at uh, Legend of Co- with uh, the Legend of Korra group walked in there and said, hey, we really want to put Korra and our su- other major supporting character, Asami, together. And uh, would that be okay? I really doubt they would say yes. I truly doubt they would say yes. So I can see the little hint, why they put the little hints and little nods here and there, where you can interpret it. Oh, they're just being friends. Where at other points you could just be like, oh, I see where you're going with this. So. That's what I feel like was the major thing is that, and again, I can see, you know, I can see people saying, oh, well, they didn't give enough hints. That's true. They did, you know, they're little tiny things, but I feel like, you know, obviously the reason I just said may have, it may have been the cause, or they would have just been like, well, Cora's kind of not with Mako right now and Bolin's an idiot. Let's just give her, let's have her and Asami finally be friends. There you go. You could look at it that way, and I, I'm pretty sure you could you you could interpret that in that in that sense. Um, but yeah, among other things, um, going back to you know the other reasons, I you know they just it's almost like fire and ice, really, with Korra and Asami. It really is. It's uh, it's very much like a fire and ice relationship. And the reason why I, I, I also like this because again you have Korra, who's this big, very bombastic, very, you know, assure of herself, but at the same time, and I'm going by book three and four, Korra, where you have this Korra who wants to learn, you know, she wants to, you know, do what's right for the people, not just right for her, what she thinks is right, right, excuse me, but more so for the right for the people, like an avatar should, and, but still retain that kind of very wild, very, uh, kind of bombastic personality and, you know, very open. Where you have Asami, who's this very reserved, very level-headed, very, you know, intelligent girl, who I feel like would rein in Korra. I feel like in a relationship, she would rein her in 
and you know at least a corrupt think about this for a second you know think about you know think for one second and I don't know I think Cora would be would be the one wearing literally the pants in the relationship I think she would um, she would be the one wearing the pants in the relationship but I think Asami could you know uh, be like okay I'm kind of taking control here you need to settle down for a second also, I love the little... Uh, also, there's a little symbolism here. There's a, I think there's a little... Maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe it's just me. But when you think about it, Korra and Asami's relationship, in a weird, pseudo kind of way, is the embodiment of what Legend of Korra had become at that point. A, you know, a harmony of spiritualism and technology. Because what's the Avatar? You know... No longer the bridge between two worlds, but more or less she ushered in the spirits. You know, the Avatar herself is this very spiritual being. And the Southern Water Tribe has this very tribal, very uh, spiritual-based culture. And you have a Sami who comes from this, you know, rich family very that, that built itself on advanced in technology. So in a weird way, it's like... Uh, the spiritual side and the technological side of these two sides of the spectrum came together to uh, just came together in perfect harmony, just like Republic City did. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking this shit. I don't know. It's three in the fucking morning, and I've had a little too much to drink. I should be lying down, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go talk about Korosami. Maybe it'll make sense. Maybe it won't. You guys tell me. Um, so, so you guys. Um, so that's pretty much why I like Korosami. I feel like that. Um, I've always liked Korosami. I mean, again, I kind of jumped a few around a few ships until I was like, "Oh, there's the SS Korosami. Room for one more? Oh, this is a good ship. Both characters have some pretty decent development. Uh, both of them are, are very." Uh, well, one's very badass, Asami, and had some major, uh, both of them had some major physical and psychological trauma that could easily have them have, have them together. Okay, I'm in. So anyway, uh, sorry for this little rant, for this little rambling, guys. I just thought I'd do a fun vid. Anyway, uh, I'll see, um, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys later.